Hello friends, my name is Bree, and welcome to that Iowa homestead. So this is me in the middle of editing. I realized after I started editing that I needed to split this video um, up just a little bit because um, otherwise it was going to be like a 25 minute long video. So I only had an intro for one of the videos. Um, so you're going to notice that my clothes changed a couple of times in this video, and that's because I filmed this over three days. Um, but basically what I'm going to do in this video is just a bunch of garden maintenance, and I wanted to take you along with me and show you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and how I'm doing it, and let's get to it. So over here in my container garden area, there's quite a few things that I need to deal with. I don't know if you can see, but my broccoli has quite a few yellowing leaves that I need to snip, snip off of there. And then also, um, I went a couple of weeks without dealing with any caterpillars at all, but they are back. And I just sprayed them the day before yesterday, my broccoli plants. I don't know if you can see the damage down here to the leaves. But I just sprayed them the day before yesterday with some more BT. And then yesterday, it rained. So I'm going to go ahead and spray my broccoli plants again just to make sure that you know all the caterpillars um, have ingested some of that BT so that you know they all die <laughs> and leave my broccoli plants alone. My poor broccoli plants, I feel bad. <laughs> and then also over at my cherry tomato area, I'm gonna go ahead and do some pruning on those as well because I, to be quite honest guys, this whole area, I've just allowed it to become very unruly and it's time that I did some work. Okay, so it's very mosquito-y back here, but I got work to do, so here we go. First things first, I'm gonna pull these weeds. That is, it is so out of hand, it's not even funny. Alright guys, it is actually the next day. Things got a little crazy yesterday, so I never ended up actually finishing anything that I started yesterday. So, here we go. Round two. Alright, this whole area back here is just completely and totally overgrown, and I've just allowed it to get way out of hand. So, time for some work. I have also let these cherry tomato plants go far too long as well without any kind of pruning. Shame on me. But I'm just going to try to train these up here so that they stay upright rather than falling down. Because these already have set a ton of fruit on them, so I don't want to cut them off. And I'm going to go through these broccolis and get rid of some of these dead branches. But I am just getting rid of anything that has any kind of spot on it. going ahead and I'm pruning some of these cherry tomato plants because they are in desperate need, like I said. I'm going to see what all I can save over here. So I don't want to get rid of too much. But I do want to get a lot of this stuff down at the base taken care of. Because anything that's at the base of a tomato plant it's gonna get pretty sick pretty quick because that's where all that moisture hangs out. Moisture is like the enemy of tomato plants. So I'm just taking my little pruning shears here and everything that comes down and touches the soil is going bye-bye. 
because that's always what's going to get sick first. It's the stuff that touches the soil. And that should give this plant a whole lot more airflow. This tomato plant will be feeling better in no time. All right, guys, I just got a couple of things that I wanted to show you back here. First of all, you see all these really sickly looking leaves? This is very typical of tomato plants that don't get pruned and have too much moisture in that area. They end up getting very sickly looking. And uh, it's just one of the main reasons that you should at least prune the bottom parts of your tomato, which is mainly what I do. And then the other thing I wanted to show you is you see all these right here? Those are like, I think they're called air roots. And this is actually what another thing that happens when tomato plants get too much moisture. The uh, stems actually start to put off roots. It's actually kind of cool. And then another thing that I wanted to show you, which is not the best scenario, is actually right there. Can you see him? I can see him. That, my friends, is the enemy of the tomato plant. A tomato hornworm. So with that, I know what I'm doing tonight. I'm getting my black light flashlight out and I'm coming out here worm hunting. I'll try to get some video of that and show you. Thought I'd bring my camera a little closer for you guys and try to give you guys a little bit better view of what I'm doing over here. So you can see here, I've pretty much taken any little stem that's gonna touch the ground or is touching the ground and I've sheared it right off of there. Nothing left down here is gonna be touching the ground. But you can see all through here is all those little air roots I was telling you about earlier. That's when a lot of moisture is in there. So it starts putting off roots. Try to get some of that moisture out of the air. I'm gonna go ahead and take this little guy too because he ain't sick yet, but he will be. Now, I'll try to take, get you over here and show you this one that I haven't pruned at all yet so you can kind of see what this is gonna end up looking like. All right, I'm sure this one just looks like a tangled mess of nothing to you right now. That's okay, we're gonna fix that. So this is a heart's yellow gooseberry, Hartman's yellow gooseberry tomato plant that is also severely in need of a good pruning. So you can see, you can see there's all kinds of yellowing leaves in here. Just overall doesn't look that great. But good news, we got some cherry tomatoes that are just about ready. I'm gonna go ahead and pick those off, or pick that one off and then get to pruning. So anything in here that looks even the slightest bit sick or is touching the ground is just going to go. It just doesn't need to be here. It's just going to make this plant sick. And that's not what we want for our tomato plants. We want them to be nice and healthy and green and lush. And this is one of those problematic vines that I have where it is pretty much touching the ground, but it's grown that way. So there's no real way that I can fix that. And there's fruit on it and lots of like good sized fruit. So against my better judgment, I'm going to leave this branch for now. But I'm going to get rid of everything else just because... So far, this branch is not sick, and it has lots of good-looking fruit on it. So you can really see what a difference this is down here. No more yellowing leaves, except for I see one right here that I need to get. 
No more yellowing leaves. I tried really hard to stand this one up. I'm going to have to go get some twine and tie that up. Otherwise, it's just going to keep falling. But it already looks, I mean, a hundred times better down here than it did before. So, I got one left over here. Then I'm all done. All right. Again, you can just see how much cleaner that looks. This plant is going to feel a million times better. And look at that. Another heart's yellow gooseberry. Hartman's yellow gooseberry. Sorry. So now I got two off this plant. So my cucumber plants have absolutely exploded in the last couple of weeks, which is a great because I love canning pickles. And I, my husband loves when I make him cucumber salad to take to work for him. So I don't know if you recall when I did my garden tour, but these first few cucumber plants are the new variety called Parisian pickling cucumber. And I haven't really seen a ton of action as far as fruit goes on these first ones, but my back ones, the Chicago pickling cucumbers, already have a ton. So I'm going to play my favorite game of uh, find the cucumber. So I have my very first cucumber off of the Parisian pickling cucumbers, and it looks great. This is about the perfect size. You can let them get a little bit bigger than this, but for canning purposes, I like them to be about this size. So I am seeing a ton in this first half. They're just not quite ready to be harvested yet. They're all about this big or so, and only like this big around. Not quite ready to be harvested, but they should be ready in the next couple of days. Cucumbers grow really fast. Not just a ton, but not too shabby for the first harvest. <laughs> Mosquitoes are starting to get bad out here. But, save the best for last, it's time to harvest this whole bed of onions. They are ready to go. A lot of these are pretty smallish looking, but I do have some decent sized ones in here. The sun is setting, the mosquitoes are biting. It is time for me to go inside. But before I do, I just wanna get these plants over here in my container area, a little bit of water, and I will finish everything else up tomorrow. So this is gonna turn into a three day vlog. <laughs> Whoops. Done and done. I don't know if you noticed, but I was spraying the foliage on my broccoli plants. Normally I wouldn't do that, but the sun is already set, so I'm in no danger of burning the leaves in that way. And um, I just had to do a second application of BT. It's been a couple weeks since my first one, and uh, the caterpillars had returned. So I did a second application of BT, 
they're all dead. And I was just spraying down the foliage just to make sure all those dead cat caterpillars got kind of washed away. Otherwise, I would not normally spray down the foliage, just, you know, bottom water. <sighs> but I just got bit by a mosquito right there. I am going to wrap this hose up and I'm going to go inside for, for tonight. Tomorrow, I'm going to clean up this mess over here that I made, pruning all these plants and getting rid of all those weeds. And then I think I'm going to do some fertilizing and I might do a second round of BT just in case. See you in the morning. It is now day three of our little three day vlog here. And I am over by my hose spigot near my container garden area getting eaten alive by these mosquitoes. So I'm going to very quickly mix up a new batch of BT because I would like to treat my broccoli one more time. And then I would also like to go ahead and treat my cherry tomatoes for those tomato hornworms because it says on here it's supposed to work. So I'm gonna try it. But it says on the back here, you're supposed to mix anywhere from half a teaspoon to four teaspoons per gallon. So I'm, I'm just gonna mix up a half a gallon here. And I'm gonna do two teaspoons in here. This is a half teaspoon measuring cup, unfortunately. All right, quick and easy. Screw this back on and get away from these mosquitoes. Holy cow, they're terrible. Okay, I got my batch mixed up right here. Just gonna give it some pressure and spray them down. Now, as I'm spraying here, I am looking over every little leaf that I spray checking them out for more tomato hornworms. Now, I already posted my video about hunting for tomato hornworms last night, but just to be thorough, I wanted to go ahead and spray today just to make sure I got them all. If you did not see that video, I'll go ahead and put a link to it right now. All right, and while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and spray down these broccolis too, just because I wanna double check and make sure that I got all of those caterpillars. All right, that should do it. All right, so the last thing that I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna fertilize this container garden area. It is sorely in need, and how I'm gonna do that so I'm just gonna take this watering can right here and I am gonna put a little splash of my fertilizer in there and fill it up with water. So the instructions say to mix one ounce per gallon. So I don't have anything to measure an ounce, so I'm just gonna do a little splash into the watering can and then I'm gonna fill it the rest of the way up with water. Just about like that, perfect. Got my hose going here. And I'll probably do half a gallon per container. So I'll fill this up a couple of times. And I'm gonna start way in the back and work my way forward. All right, guys. That is a wrap on this garden maintenance video. Um, sorry if it was a little jumbled around, um, but thank you for coming with me today. I'll see you soon.